So far in this mini-series, we've only really considered oscillators and trend-following indicators separately. But in this episode, we take a look at how these can be put to best use by combining them to potentially produce multiple individual trading strategies. We'll then take a look at a price chart to see how this might be done with two example indicators. Stay tuned. In the previous episode, we looked at two different techniques for classifying the market regime. And in particular, we were doing that using trend filters and volatility filters. And we also started to consider the impact of statistical significance on that classification and what we might do to address those issues. We then went on to look at how we might adjust trading rules in order to specifically target different characteristics that exist in each of those classifications. But what we're going to move on and do now is to consider multiple ways of combining different types of indicator to build viable trading systems. And in this example, I'm going to consider indicators that firstly allow us to categorize the trend of the market, and then secondly, those that provide trigger signals. Now, as you know, throughout this series, we've always categorized indicators in terms of oscillators or trend following indicators. And so let's now look at how we might combine these into a single system. So the first option is to use an oscillator for both the trend filter and also for the trigger. So as an example here, we might use the Arun indicator in conjunction with the stochastic indicator, where the Arun is telling us the trend and the stochastic is giving us the triggers. But alternatively, we might use a trend following indicator to give us an indication of the trend category while sticking with an oscillator for the trigger. So an example here is that we might use a triple moving average to ascertain the trend while still using the stochastic for the trigger. And likewise, in this category, we might now use the Arun with a trend following trigger. So as an example, a moving average crossover. And the final category, of course, is one where we use a trend following indicator for both. So this might be a triple moving average for the trend and a dual moving average crossover for the trigger. Now, remember what I've said previously. These usually tend to work best, especially in my own experience, when the regime filter indicators operate on a higher time frame. So for example, the H1. But this of course is relative to the time frame that you're using for your trigger. And so here you might want to use an M15 chart, for example, for those trigger indicators. But equally, this could be the H4 for the trend, and H1 for the trigger, or maybe even the 20 minute chart for the trend and five minutes for the trigger. But I tend to stick with this ratio of four to one. But as I've said before, that all depends on the number of periods that you're using for your indicators. And so to find the best for you, then obviously you'd need to backtest. But there's a big word of warning here. Do not assume that because I'm telling you you can combine indicators in this way to produce a system, I'm condoning you just simply putting different indicators together to see if you can get a viable system. That is not the case. You should always start off from the basis of a viable system premise that's targeting a particular edge in the price movements that you're trying to exploit. And so you should be choosing your indicators based on that and choosing the indicators that will enable you to best exploit that edge. All I'm saying is that sometimes it's going to be most beneficial to use some combination of an oscillator with a trend following indicator and sometimes it will be better to use two of the same type. 
and that will depend on what you're trying to achieve. Now, probably the most important point here is that it takes time to properly understand the behavior of indicators. So what you need to avoid at all costs is just aimlessly combining two indicators together, seeing if you get good results, which you probably won't, and then immediately switching over to two different indicators. Believe me, that approach will get you nowhere. Instead, you need to take a considered and logical approach to this combination process. And as you go, you need to learn how those indicators are operating. So if I were to put together a system like this, I'd probably be spending in the region of five to six hours going through a process of looking at how those indicators interact with each other, looking at how they give me the information I need to be able to determine my system rules, trying out different classification techniques, trying out different trigger techniques. And by the way, at this point, I wouldn't even be considering doing an optimization. This is still purely within the realms of trading system development. So my general advice is to just slow down, take this more measured approach, and avoid this flip-flopping from one indicator to another in the hope that you'll put two together that work. But in terms of the combinations that are available for you in order to exploit the edge you're trying to target with your system, there are probably endless combinations. So the combination of the components that we looked at in the example give us four configurations that we could try. But I'm certainly aware of probably in the range of 10 or 11 trend indicators that could be used. And in terms of trigger indicators, well, you're into the hundreds or thousands. So there are actually far more combinations than you could ever attempt to test out, which is why, again, you need to focus your efforts on those that you feel are most likely to enable you to exploit your edge. So in terms of the practicalities of combining these now, I'm going to focus on this top right example, which is the triple moving average and the stochastic for the trigger. So in the top part of the chart, we see the triple moving average, which for me, I'm just using values of 50, 100 and 200 for the periods of those three moving averages. And then at the bottom, we have the stochastic indicator. Now, if we consider the rules that we spoke about previously, whereby if we're in a downtrend, we won't take any trades against the trend, Let's take a look at how that manifests itself specifically using these two indicators. So firstly, you'll remember that the generally accepted way to use a triple moving average is to look at the order of those three moving average lines. And when they are in order, so with the fastest at the bottom, the slowest at the top, then this is usually indicative of a downtrend, whereas if it's the other way around, it will be a uptrend. And if they're in the wrong order, then you can't classify it as a trend at all. So if we're not going to trade against the trend, if we look here, you can see that we're in a downtrend from probably this region here, all the way over to this region here. And at this point, the fast moving average just moves above the middle moving average. So what this means is that we would not take any long trades during this period of time. So effectively using the triple moving average as a filter. So let's say as an example, we were using a trigger when the indicator went from an overbought into neutral or oversold into neutral. But during this period of time, while we're in the downtrend, we're not going to be taking any of those triggers. So you see the one here and here, here and so on. Whereas if you've determined it's the right thing to do, then you would be taking trades in the opposite direction in line with the trend. But remember, that all depends on the analysis 
that you've undertaken with your own trading system, as I spoke about previously. Don't take my word for any of this, because what I'm saying might apply to the systems I use, but not at all to yours. So this now brings us to where we're going to next. And this next episode will be the last in the mini series. So we're going to look at some of the implications of lagging indicators versus leading indicators and looking at some of the pros and cons of both of those types. And also in the same episode, we're going to take a look at some different moving averages and we'll be looking at them from the perspective of their behavior, but also the potentially different ways that we can use each of them. So please do subscribe if you want to be notified when that is available. Alternatively, if you're watching this at a later time and the episode's already available, then you'll be able to click on it top right here. Please do remember to click on the link at the bottom here if you're not aware of DarwinX and the great platform that we provide for traders. And now, until next time, trade safe.